And tomorrow marks 79 years since the end of World War II, known as Greatest Generation Day. And a group in our state is planning a special tribute to fit the occasion. Our Elena Cugino joins us in studio. And Elena, you spoke with a World War II veteran in Grand Rapids. What did he say about the celebration tomorrow? Well, David, I spoke with 98-year-old Eugene Corey, and he says he's happy to see the recognition for his generation, but he had very strong feelings about his time in the war. Take a listen. War is hell, and I hope in the world that we never get into another war. Eugene Corey is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He moved to Grand Rapids recently to be closer to family, but around 80 years ago, he was heading overseas after being drafted in the Army. That's gun close. Then, then I realized this is not my life. And, uh, and, and I'm going to tell you, I was scared stiff. I'm not going to lie. He landed in France in January of 1945, seeing sights like this. Buildings reduced to rubble and planes flying close overhead. When I saw people starving, when I saw people not eating, it affects you. Okay? And, uh, and then when you meet these people, they're just like you and I. He spent 70 days in combat, and after the war was over, he was sent to the Philippines to find Japanese soldiers on the islands. After a year, he was able to come home. When the war was over, they brought us home, and we got a hero's parade in New York. So that, that, that was a good experience. Greatest Generation Day is on September 2nd. It's a way to celebrate people like Corey and the sacrifices that generation made during World War II. It's kind of looking back and, and giving, a ch giving us a chance to celebrate this generation and their accomplishments because, you know, they are disappearing. Joel Westfall, the chairman of the celebration in Michigan, says they are gearing up for next year, which will be the 80th. They are planning a large parade in Grand Rapids and having jets flying over the city. This is the last chance we will ever have to, you know, honor this, this generation. And for Corey, the day is a time to reflect on his past and the hardships that his generation went through. People very seldom ate, you know, and people were unemployed. And for those people to recover and then have that basic education, that, to me, that's what made us successful. Now, after the war, Corey went into education. He was a teacher, principal, then superintendent, and he actually was a huge part of helping his schools get integrated. So he has a long story, and we're working on getting that up at woodtv.com. <laughs> but you can also find, when we put that up, how to donate for that 80th celebration, which is going to be a big celebration. He's a big example as to how can the greatest generation be even greater because of his career in education after his service. Yeah, and so. passing it on to the next generation. An incredible story. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. Of course.